Hello and welcome to the uh, support video about adding together vectors. There are three clear objectives that I want you to gain from this lesson. And they are that you know the difference between a scalar and a vector quantity, so you can define those two quantities. That you can add together vectors that are acting in parallel to each other. And that you can also add to together vectors that are perpendicular to each other. Now, a scalar quantity has is a quantity that has size only. So we're talking about examples such as mass, temperature, time, density, speed, or distance. And with these quantities, it only matters how big the quantity is, that direction isn't relevant and has no significance. A vector quantity, though, has size and direction. And this is very important with... Um, with the topic of motion because of course we've got lots of um, quantities such as displacement, velocity, acceleration, force and momentum where the direction is as important as the actual size of the actual vector itself. Now vectors that are parallel can be added together arithmetically to find the resultant vector. That is the vectors that are acting horizontally or vertically can be added together. So let's look at uh, as an example. So if we have um, a car with basically two forces acting on it of 800 newtons and say 600 newtons, then what we do is we define the direction that we're going to take as positive. So I'm going to say that the direction to the right is positive. And because both of these vectors are acting in the same direction, I can simply add them together to find the resultant. So the resultant would be equal to 800 plus 600, which if my math is correct, is 400 newtons. Let's take another example where perhaps we have a car that's acting, that's driving along, and it has a force pushing it forward with 800 newtons but it has some air resistance acting against it, maybe 200 newtons, something like that. And we, we follow the same process, basically. We add the two vectors together, but this time we're taking the direction to the right as being positive, which means that my when I add them together, my 200 newtons is actually negative. So again, R will just be equal to 800 plus, but we have a negative 200 newtons. Okay, so it becomes 800 minus 200, which is 600 newtons. Now, vectors that are perpendicular or at right angles to each other can be added together using Pythagoras' theorem and trigonometry. So let's just remind ourselves about those two things. For a right angle triangle, we can actually work out the length of the size by using Pythagoras' theorem. So just to remind you, here we have our right angle triangle here the, with the right angle in the corner. And of course Pythagoras' theorem simply states that the square of the two sides, or the two sides squared and added together, is equal to the hypotenuse squared. And then trigonometry just allows us to work out the angles within a right angle triangle. And so if I wanted to work out this angle theta, I could do so by using Sokotoa. So just to remind you, Sokotoa very simply reminds us that sine of an angle is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. The cosine of an angle is equal to the adjacent side divided by the length of the hypotenuse side. And the tangent of an angle is equal to the opposite divided by the adjacent. So in order to show you the steps involved in adding together two perpendicular um, vectors, I'm going to look at an example. So here we have Anne who is basically swimming across um, a river with a speed of 4 meters per second. The river has a current that is perpendicular to Anne's path, so forcing her sideways, and this has a speed of 3 meters per second. So what is Anne's resultant velocity? So our first step is to show the vectors that are acting on Anne, in this case her velocities, um, and it's quite simple. We have uh, Anne represented by the dot. She's obviously trying to swim across the river with a speed of four meters per second. And then of course the current is trying to force her sideways with a speed of three meters per second. 
The next step then is to actually create a par parallelogram, which is where you essentially draw two lines parallel to the vectors. And this will allow us to actually then realize that her resultant velocity is going to be acting up towards the corner of that rectangle that we've created. Now I want to actually create a triangle then, so that I have then a triangle of velocities or triangle of vectors, and then from that I can use Pythagoras. And the way I'm going to do that is obviously I'm going to move one of these vectors across. So I'm going to move this across to this side, which will form my triangle. I'm going to redraw that so it's a little bit clearer. So there's my resultant. That's my original 4 meters per second acting across the river. And this is the current. And here's the right angle. So it's the current vector, 3 meters per second. And I now have a nice right angle triangle with which I can actually do my calculation with. So here I've redrawn the triangle and now we're going through the calculation. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find out the size of r. So I know that r squared is equal to 4 squared plus 3 squared, which is 16 plus 9, which equals 25. And that makes then r would be the square root of 25 which would be 5 meters per second. So now I have the size of the resultant uh, velocity for Anne. I now need to know the direction. And so what I'm going to do there is I'm actually then going to work out the angle theta, which is this going to be this angle here. I could choose to work out the other angle, but I've chosen to take the angle to the horizontal. So I know, and I'm going to use tan to do this because I'm obviously certain of these two values and I know that they're absolutely correct and it's not possible that I've made a silly mistake to work out R so I'm going to use the 3 and the 4 in this. So the opposite is obviously the 4 meters per second and the adjacent is the 3 meters per second and tan theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent which is 4 over 3. So if I want to find theta I have to do the inverse tan or tan minus 1 of 4 divided by 3 and that comes out to be 53 degrees. So now I can actually write what my answer so that Anne's resultant velocity is actually going to be 5 meters per second at an angle of 53 degrees to the horizontal. And finally, there is a f another way that we can add vectors together, and that's using a scale diagram, which takes away the need for any mathematics. You just got to be very careful when you're using your scale that you do it your diagram accurately. So you come up with the scale to represent the size of the forces or velocities or accelerations, where the vector is. So it literally would be you'd allow one centimeter on your diagram to represent perhaps ten newtons or five meters per second or whatever, and you very simply then using the information that you're given in the question. You draw an accurate diagram using a protractor to measure angles and you connect the vectors together. And then when you finally finish the vectors that you need to add together, you then obviously find out on your diagram the resultant. And the resultant in this particular case would obviously go from our starting point to our end point. And then using your scale, you would actually use a ruler to measure the length of that arrow, work out how long it is, work out what that means in terms of the scale, and then also measure the angle. And if it was perhaps distances, you might actually measure that angle there to get the bearing. And um, for those of you that have done 10 tours, you probably do this sort of thing on your um, maps as you're trying to navigate yourself across the moors.